back to Connie's Kitchen. Today we're shooting episode 10. Yay! And I have a special guest, my husband Chris. Hello. You know him as CJ Karnacki with the Oxford Leader, but when he's here with me, he's Chris. Okay. And we've been married for 14 years and crazy busy schedules all the time. So something we've always tried to do is have a tradition of Friday evenings. We set aside a couple hours, we grill up some steaks, we have some twice baked potatoes, a martini, and we're kind of going to show you tonight, or two, and we're going to show you kind of how we do that. So I started the steaks marinating already, and I pulled them out of the fridge because you want to let them come up to room temperature some. You don't want to throw cold, cold meat on a hot, hot grill because it'll seize up and get, get tough on you. These have just been marinated a little bit of salt and pepper, um, some balsamic vinegar, a little bit of olive oil, and that's it. And, and then our next segment, Chris is going to go outside on this beautiful 16 degree day and grill them for us. Yay. So, and that's my meat mallet. I don't use much, just hit it a little bit. It opens the meat up and then really draws up that marinade. So, we're going to get started on the twice baked potatoes, which are hot, hot, hot. Why don't you get started on chopping up the onions? Sure. And watch this because it's very hot. Best way to tell if your potatoes have baked through, I use baking nails, and that takes the heat all the way through. I take it and I spin it, and it comes right out. That's how we know the potatoes are done. Before I throw them in the oven, I drizzled them with a little bit of olive oil and sprinkled them with just a little bit of the pink Himalayan salt that I've been using. That's this one here. Just it's got a lot of flavor, so you don't need much. So we'll get these ready and then throw them back in the oven to keep them warm and let the cheese melt before we go outside and enjoy this beautiful summer's day, or <laughs> winter's day. But the sun's out, so it's all good. Is that hot? That's hot. Okay, you're going to need this. Well, of course, I have to chop them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, the logistics. I'm so board. happy to have a guest here, and I'm not used to having a guest here. So, oh, But we cook together at home a lot, and it works. Yes. She yells at me, and I listen. <laughs> now, don't be talking that way. All right, yes, so sir. I'm, I'm going to start. <laughs> Two of the most beautiful words in the English language. All righty. I'm going to just carefully take off the top of the potato with a knife that needs to be sharpened. Hey, mine needs to be sharpened, too. Gee, who sharpens the knives around here? That would be you. All right, and now I could just start scooping, but sometimes the shell breaks. So I'm just going to go in and loosen it up a little bit. Use a short knife so you don't go all the way through. I'm going to start loosening up that potato. Then we're going to start throwing it in our bowl. Like that there. And I'm putting the onions in the bowl. Like you don't do this every Friday. Actually, Chris likes to get started early because he never knows what his timing is going to be. So he'll actually make up the potatoes the night before, set the steaks to marinating the night before. I always have a New York strip. He generally has venison. And uh, we have a nice, even if it's just a couple hours before he has to get back to work, we try to have that Friday evening. And on the nights that I'm not home, I lost my potato. There you go. You Would you like some more onion, or is that adequate? That's perfect, thank you. Thank Could you, you open that potato? Okay. The nights that I'm not home, if I'm up here working, Chris keeps the tradition going. If he's got, you know, knows somebody that's on their own for Friday evening, he'll have them over, and they'll have steak night. And generally that's followed by scotch and cigars, so that's not such a bad thing. Oh, there you go. It's important to do all your prep work and cooking the night before, so the minute you get home Friday, you can start drinking, because after all, it is the weekend. <laughs> go ahead. You can scoop. So we've got that, and now while he's doing that, I'm going to start adding some more ingredients. Just a little bit of butter. A little bit of butter. <laughs> and I'll try that again. <laughs> no, I got it, thanks. And a little bit of cheese. That's why I had the bowl over here in front of me. I would personally put a lot more cheese than that. I know. Well, I'm going to. We're not going to make the kind of potatoes that when you restuff them, they're as big as your head. Because very few people want that much potato. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of sour cream. I can add more, but we want to balance the amount of potato we've got. So, 
need something to mix that with. Excuse me. Generally, of course. Hold on, I'm not done scooping the potato. It's all right, you don't have to scoop so fast. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm under pressure. The camera's on me. No, here in Connie's kitchen, we just take it slow, we relax. It's like having about having fun in the kitchen like we do at home. Except we have clothes on here. That's true. All right, I'm putting in a little bit, again, just a little bit of the pink Himalayan salt and a little bit of pepper. And then when we get the potato in there, we'll mix it up. We'll restuff there them. There we go. I've already got the oven set at 350 because we're just going to put them in there and put a little foil over them. Would you like me to mash the potato mixture? Would you please mash the potato mixture? I would. <laughs> yes, it's like this all the time. But then again, like I said, after 14 years, we're still having fun. So I like to, in my potatoes, she hasn't done it here, but I like to add a little smoked paprika just for a little extra flavor. Mm -hmm. That's and some, a helpful hint. And sometimes crumbled bacon. If we Lots have some bacon. crumbled bacon, yeah. Usually eight to nine strips will do it. <laughs> For one potato. Do we need more sour cream or are we good? It seems like the consistency is good as the what? Consistency. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't mix it to death, hon. Just mix it up. <laughs> Chris has been, he's been great for all it's kidding around. Like we had a wine dinner uh, in middle of February. At the last minute I was shorthanded and he jumped in, handled all the service. And a really cool thing. Shall I fill the potatoes Would you now? fill the potatoes sure. now? Thank you. Was a, uh, my daughter and her friend showed up at the end. Before I knew it, they had all the cleanup done. They just helping me out. Of course, they said they were begging for leftovers. But, uh, but that's okay too. It was a fun night. We had a lot of fun. And another dinner coming up on March 22nd. So we're going to get these potatoes stuffed, tent them with foil, set them back in the oven. They're already cooked, so it's just going to get the cheese melting. And when we come back, we're going to be outside in the beautiful sunshine, and we're going to cook the steaks. So Yum. come back and join us. And, oh, you're doing a wonderful job, honey. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. Don't worry about mess. I have a cleanup crew that comes in later. And I'd like it noted, because you're zooming in, I did wash my hands before this segment. <laughs> Well, that's because I'm a bit of a maniac about that. Don't those look good? Mm -hmm. To me, that's a meal all by itself. That's just insane. <laughs> you need meat in every meal. That's true. Well, not every meal. So come back. We'll see you in a few minutes. We'll be outside at the grill. Okay, honey, you can stop stuffing. <laughs> they look good. Hello, I'm Algin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And together Dave and I host a program called Minutes by Minute. We discuss what local Oxford and Addison politicians and appointed representatives are doing to make your life happy or miserable by passing laws, ordinances, and regulations that affect you. We believe that within those political decisions is humor. You just have to hunt for it. For example, did you know there's a local ordinance that allows people to shoot off fireworks 24 hours a day, 365 <laughs> days a year? But since they can do it, nobody wants to do it. Catch us Monday through Friday on Charter 191 and ATT Universe 99, scheduled for 7 a.m., 11 a.m., and 10.30 p.m., or go to our webpage, occtv.org, and click on Programs. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Each week, catch us on Minutes by Minute. Don't miss it. We're outside, and I know it's cold. It's, what, 16, 18 degrees, but the sun is out, and we're grilling. So you ready to start throwing those steaks on the grill? Because the grill's hot. Okay. Okay, do that. <laughs> and like I said, the key here, even though they probably cooled a little bit, is you don't want to throw cold on the grill, because it just seizes right up. Oh, this feels so good. <laughs> Oh, listen to that. Don't block the shot, babe. Listen to that. Ooh, love that sizzle. Now he's just going to do about two minutes flip, two minutes flip, maybe two minutes flip, and they're done. These are nice, thin-cut New York strips. So while he's doing that, I wanted to talk about the grounds a little bit. You haven't seen much of the grounds, and we'll be doing a lot out here come spring and summer. The big, beautiful red building in the back is my barn. 
it's huge it's got a round pen and it's we want to use it for events but unfortunately we have raccoons and we've tried to convince them peaceably to leave we take them away and they come back so when we figure out a way to get them to leave peaceably then we'll be able to open up the barn and use it but in the meantime we have almost 90 acres here and we back to jonathan woods nature preserve so we've got a lot of room to play out behind me behind these trees is what we call the meadow big open space we get a lot of a lot of deer and turkey through there all all year long really and this is going to be a fun project right here where it's all covered with snow right now this is going to be an area we cleared it out last last summer we pulled all our deadfall trees and chipped the wood so we didn't have to buy chips this summer we'll be putting in a yellow brick road that will be a path to bring people from the parking areas over to the house but it'll be a fun way to do it we'll have benches and plantings over here kind of half buried in the snow is the well which is for making wishes or throwing curses, and we ask that you please be specific because it seems to be a very powerful well. And then I'm thinking over on the far end of this area, we're going to put in a hopscotch court because why not? You know, come out here to have fun and to play. You about ready to flip? We getting there? I'm sorry, I didn't hear anything past scotch. <laughs> you ready to flip? Well, hold on. Let me check. It's important to time things. <laughs> yes, yes, I think we're it's gonna... time to flip. Oh, Ooh, look at those. This smells so good. Kind of look at that. We got grill marks. So you can grill all year long, and we do. It's not grilling, it's not just for summer anymore. So coming up in May, we're going to be shearing all the alpacas, sorry about that, um, that live at the next farm. And what we're doing is having a shearing day where people can come here to the lodge, we'll have a luncheon, and a lot of spinners and weavers and knitters and such are coming out. And I'm going to be taking them over there in groups, and they can choose an animal, watch it sheared, pick up, gather up that whole blanket, put it in a bag, take it home. They'll be able to buy the full fleeces that day. Tell me where else you can do that. And you'll know that it's 100% American alpaca because it's grown right here. We have rugs. Our rugs came back. I talked about those before. And they finally came back from the mill in Texas, and they're wonderful. Every color of alpaca you can imagine from almost white to almost black and all the cinnamons and browns and fawn colors in between. And we have those ranging from like placemat size all the way up to room size six by nine. So if you get interested in those, give me a call. Alpaca is incredibly durable. It's gonna last you forever. If it gets dirty, just hose it down or throw it out in the snow. Either way, no smell, no oil like you get from wool because there's no lanolin. They're completely hypoallergenic and they really are wonderful. So we've got those up here at the lodge and we will have them online soon. And speaking of online, we're working on our website and our new Facebook fan page. But for now, I'm still at Treetop Lodge Oxford uh, Facebook. Friend request me, and I'll say yes. Give me a call anytime at 248-933-4579 or email me at stormy3958 at att.net. And that's where you can get information about wine dinners and birthdays and overnights and scrapbooking events. And we're getting excited because this weekend we're going to spend the weekend assembling and arranging all our new scrapbooking furniture. You want to flip one more time? Wow, I didn't know we were doing that this week. I so. know, we've got so much going on. Okay, let me see. I think it might be time. It is flip. time. Is it? Oh, just because you say it is? It okay. is. <laughs> All right, Whoa, this will be the final that. flip. Oh, they smell so good. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Mm. Oh, okay. <sighs> About two minutes, they're going to come off the grill. Then we're going to go inside, plate them up, and eat. So that's what we've got going on up here. The scrapbookers, we have, we've just brought in new five-foot tables. We have ot lights. We have really comfortable chairs with wheels and supports and all that kind of the things that the scrapbookers have asked us for, we will have. You can come up for a day. You can come up for a weekend. Um, and, and knitters and, and weavers and, and any type of activity you can imagine. Like I said, so long as be tour, so long as it's quiet. You know, we don't want a lot of noise out here. It's just a quiet, peaceful place to get together with friends and enjoy. Well, so that's Tom, a If I could interject. Yes? What if I'm a group who wants to meet here, say, on a weekly or monthly basis? Then you call me and we set it up. That's it's, pretty convenient. It's just that easy. <laughs> and we cater as much as we can. We cater our menus to our, our guests' needs. And it's, a, it's been a lot of fun. We have some groups that are coming regularly every month now. So give me a call because you don't want to lose your dates. So we're going to take the steaks in the house and we're gonna have, we're gonna eat. So join us back inside in just a couple of minutes. Okay, honey.
Well, I think it's time for you to make a martini. Definitely. After that first segment, the, I can the sure grill, use a drink. <laughs> the grill's heating up, and so we'll throw the steaks out at the end so they can rest and go right on the plate. So Chris is going to build a martini, the martini, and yes. he will explain it. Well, I'm just going to putz with a salad, so don't pay any attention to me. There's a few things about a martini. I believe martini is the king of cocktails and is the most important drink in the bar. A lot of people, they just think you can throw anything in a martini glass and call it a martini. And to those people, they are wrong. You cannot put anything in a martini but vodka, or, I'm sorry, gin, vodka, and vermouth, or in this case, Lillette Blanc, which is a similar aperitif wine. In order to make the perfect martini, all these ingredients, the gin and the vodka, should always be in the freezer and be ice cold at all times. And the Lillette Blanc should not be in the freezer, but should be in the refrigerator to keep it nice and cold. Also in your freezer should be your cocktail shaker, which I'll just reach in and grab here. Because the most important thing with the martini is it has to be ice cold at all times. There's nothing worse than a warm martini, except no martini at all. So we take our shaker and we fill it about halfway with ice. And then we start pouring in our ingredients. You should point out here you're making an individual drink. Yes. These are for when you're making more than one at a time. If you're going to have a party or you've just had a really bad day, you can use one of these larger shakers, which is capable of making probably two to four drinks, depending on. This one's my favorite. This is a sterling silver shaker. I love this one. I bring this out for parties, and I brought it out for today because it's a special occasion. So now that we have our shaker filled halfway with ice, I know, that was very sweet, we're going to measure. The martini I make is called a Vesper. It consists of gin, vodka, and the Lillette Blanc, and it was first featured in the Casino Royale, which was the very first James Bond novel. So it consists, to start with, three ounces of gin. So we measure out three ounces very carefully. It's important to measure, too. A lot of people think you can just eyeball it. It's like, no, if you want the drink to come out consistent and you want it to come out well every time, you should always measure your proportions. To me, bartending is an art and mixology is a science. I don't believe just any monkey who can pull a tap is a bartender. <laughs> Now, if we've got lots gin, of friends downtown today, babe. <laughs> well, sorry, there are a lot of people behind the bar these days who have no business being there. Just because you happen to be a large breasted woman with a tight t shirt doesn't make you a good bartender. <laughs> so now we add vodka. So if you're keeping track, that's four ounces of liquor, which is basically this drink is a double martini. Now we add our last ingredient, which is Lillette Blanc, which can be found at Oxford Wine and Beverage in downtown Oxford. It's similar to vermouth, but it's got a little more flavor to it. So this we put only a half an ounce. So now our drink, when complete, will be four and a half ounces of liquor. So after we you have dropped it, your towel over there. I dropped my towel. Thank you for pointing nope, that out. No, leave it there. I'll get you a fresh one. <laughs> leave it there. I'll get you a fresh one. So after we have everything in the shaker, we put a lid on. And it's important to have a proper cocktail shaker. I don't believe in using what's called a Boston shakers, where they take a glass and put it on a metal uh, part of a cocktail shaker. It's a glass and a metal portion. Now you should always have a proper cocktail shaker. Well, you can get glass shards doing that. You can do that. And then I like to, because the shaker is going to be ice cold, I like to wrap it in a towel while I'm shaking it. That keeps from getting your hands hurt by the freezing cold temperature of the shaker. But it also insulates the shaker to keep the cold in. So you basically want to shake it for about one minute. How am I doing? You're doing fine. Right, you're going to want to step back a little bit because of the noise. While you're oh. step back and shake. I'm going to step off to the side. While he's shaking, I just threw together a basic salad. This is fresh rapini. I threw in some of our leftover green onions. A little bit of salt and pepper. Um, some herbs to provide seasoning. And then I just drizzled it with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. So we got a, just a real basic salad that would be a nice fresh bite between our potato and our steak and martini. So... How's it coming, babe? Oh, I think we're done. Couple it's like a dance, shakes. isn't it? It's, it's like, like a, a dance. dance. You want to shake it nice and vigorously so it gets ice cold. Now I'm going to reach in the freezer as I go off camera and get the other thing that should always be in the freezer is your glass. Because I said martini should be ice cold. You notice so these have a nice thick stem. 
so, so they stand up to the freezer. Sorry, hon. That's all right. So everything should be ice cold. Because if you put a cold martini in a warm glass, it's going to lower the temperature right away. So we'll just pour that in. Oh, that's uh, pretty. Mother's milk. That's pretty. This is, this is like I said, a real dark teeny. It's not a chocolate teeny. It's not an apple teeny. Which, again, those are not martinis. This is a true martini. Now, talk a little bit about the various garnishes. Well, the various garnishes you can have in a martini are usually olives. Not um, stuffed with anything. Not stuffed with anything. I was going to get to that. <laughs> olives, onions. If you put a cocktail onion in, it's called a Gibson. Or what I like to use in the Vesper, and what it calls for, is a nice, thin lemon peel. Basically, you take the lemon peel, you put it in a twist, like this, and you drop it in your glass, and you're all set. To make the lemon peel is really simple, basically. I don't know, do you need another shot of that? <laughs> you know, just set it over here while you do. There you go. I'm trying to get this down. To make the lemon peel, you just take a lemon, take a, I like to use a fillet knife, and just go along the skin. Just slicing a little, I'll just slice a little bit off here. And you're left with a little bit of white on the end. So that's why I like to use the fillet knife, so you can just go along and kind of get that white right off. The goal when you're doing it is to get it down to a lemon peel Oops, that looks like this, where you've got virtually no, no white. The white tends to be bitter. Right. And then when you twist it, there's the natural juice in the lemon peel, and, you, and you, uh, the natural oil, I should say, and that oil gets in the drink and adds just a little touch of flavor to it. When we have a big party, a lot of times Chris will make up a lot of the lemon peels ahead of time and throw them in the freezer, and they come out frozen and ready for the drink. So... You must taste. Oh, the other thing that's always important to mention about a martini, it should never be on the rocks. A martini should always be served ice cold and straight up. There's no such thing as a martini on the rocks, and it never should be tolerated. Perfection? Ready to go back to work. Okay. Well, and back to work we will be in a few minutes when we get out. We're going to go outside, and we're going to throw the steaks on the grill, and then we're going to plate up lunch or supper by the time we're done. Who knows? So... Okay, so we've got our salad, the potatoes in the oven, getting ready to come, come out. All that cheese is in there getting nice and gooey. Um, oh, gooey. Got our martini, so that'll make the cook happy. It'll warm you up when you go outside. I'm already happier. See? I already feel better. <laughs> uh, don't, don't think this is something we do every day. Certainly not something he does every day while he's working. This is a special occasion. So and if you want to tolerate watching government meetings on Oxford TV, having a couple of these before you watch them is an excellent way to do that, <laughs> particularly with an Oxford Village Council meeting. Yes, ladies. Now, that's C.J. Carnacchio talking. That's, that's not my husband, Chris. That's C.J. Carnacchio talking, his evil twin. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Actually, we'll be outside in just a few minutes. We'll get bundled up and we'll go outside and get our steaks on the grill. So come back and join us, and you'll be cooking. Yeah. Yay! Okay. We're back. We're inside where it's nice and warm, but we can still see the sunshine and our gorgeous steaks. Oh, look at these. Aren't they beautiful? Ooh. Nice and juicy. If you time it right, no reason to cut into them to check for doneness because when you do that, they just, all the moisture, you lose it and you end up with dry meat. So we're going to go ahead, plate our rapini and green onion salad, which we dressed with just balsamic and olive oil. To Is kind that of, all? Yeah, just to kind of complement the marinade on the meat. That's very simple. And very fresh. 
like to have, because the, the potatoes tend to be a little heavy. Look at these potatoes. Oh. Are they ooey gooey and luscious? The pride of Idaho. The pride of Oxford. Pride of Treetop Lodge. Oh, look at that. Can't even feel it burning my fingers. <laughs> so there you go. We are ready to eat. I'm going to gather up some forks and knives. And I want to thank you for being here today. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, stranger. <laughs> Will you come back and visit again? <laughs> if you're going to have more alcohol, you know I'll be here. <laughs> so join us anytime up here. Like I said before, give me a call. We'll, we'll give you a tour. We'll set up your event. And we'll have a lot of fun doing it because it's always like this in the kitchen. So maybe you want to come and join me in the kitchen. That would be fun, too. I would really enjoy that. So for right now, we're going to say adios because we're going to have lunch. You stay classy, Oxford. <laughs>